So it all starts with the powertrain. Of course, the powertrain is the most important part with the w going from the W16 to the naturally aspirated V16 and the hybrid powertrain system. As you know, when we started to develop it, we could have gone in any direction when it comes to the shape of the car, to the category of car. It didn't have to be a sports car. Bugatti's history is more than rich enough to go in another direction, but we have decided that for the new chapter, we go with the hypercar, and then we decided to also continue with the combustion engine. So going with the new combustion engine was a strong decision, but not only with any combustion engine, we wanted to have the most emotional combustion engine possible. That's why naturally aspirated, but the naturally aspirated engine was only made possible by a very high-tech electric powertrain, three electric motors, a 25 kilowatt hour battery pack, which gives enough power, but also decent all-electric range if you need it, especially to make the car future-proof in case in some areas you will not be able to run with a combustion engine at all. So with the 25 kilowatt hours, you should get a pretty decent uh, all-electric range of around 60, 70 kilometers, even without using the combustion engine. Uh, so a V16 is, of course, naturally longer than a W16. As you know, W16 has its cylinders offset. They are not in a straight line, while the V16 cylinders are in a straight line. On top of that, this car has actually more displacement. While everyone went for uh, reducing the size of engines, here we went from 8 liters to 8.3. So this engine is 25 centimeters longer compared to the W16. And then we have a big battery pack and three electric motors, and we even have a bigger trunk and despite the lower cabin, we have the same interior space as a Chiron. So when we started working on this, I didn't know what it means for design if the car just becomes longer because of a longer engine and because of all the other stuff we needed to fit in the car. I thought maybe it's good for design. So I talked to Frank and Achim, and they immediately said, no, 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 no. Just don't make the car any longer. Just try to keep the same length. So despite having so much longer engine and all the other hybrid parts, the big battery and so on, the car is only 2.9 millimeters longer in wheelbase. That's one of the magic tricks that Emilio and his team have done to keep the beauty of it and even more of a magic trick, the first hybrid car that went from combustion only to hybrid and being lighter than the combustion car. Despite having the 200 kilos of battery pack and all the other electric powertrain components. When we go to the top view, you can see how different it is. So in the Chiron, many of you who are using it, you know that you sit quite far away from your passenger. And that's because the gearbox of the car was in front of the engine, so between the passengers. That's why you were sitting far apart one from the other. And that also means the doors move out and the windows move out, the greenhouse. And here we have now the battery in the middle, in the tunnel, but also behind the seats, structurally integrated into the monocoque, and the gearbox, now an eight-speed double clutch, behind the engine, with an electric motor in the rear, two electric motors in the front. That enabled us to push the occupants closer while still having more than enough comfort, the same comfort, just closer, which meant that the glasses, the greenhouse, is now narrower, and that enabled, for example, this shoulder line here, which we also use for the aerodynamics that are compressed at the front to then go into the air intake of the engine. And you can see that this piece here, this shoulder line, we call it the shoulder, makes the car look more masculine. Even when it's standing still, it's more dynamic. And that's something where you see where design is not just something on top. It's enabled by the technology underneath. It all works together. So because of the gearbox now we're moving it to the back, the battery being more narrow, the seats moving closer, you have this masculinity that we have here. And then, of course, the engine. Uh, it's, uh, as you have seen already, exposed. That was very important for us to see the engine and not just any kind of cover. This is the actual plenum of the engine that you see outside. And one of the things that we have managed to do, because for total air resistance is actually the drag coefficient times frontal area. And as Frank has explained, we tried to reduce the frontal area as much as we could. So the roof is lower, the bonnet is lower, but also the cabin is more narrow, so the frontal area is a lot smaller. So the aerodynamicist wanted actually to close 
the rear to achieve their aerodynamic targets, the, the drag coefficient, or to significantly reduce this opening. But we told them, no, 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 no. You are talking only about the drag coefficient. You are forgetting that you need to multiply that with the frontal area. So we have reduced the frontal area greatly, so we can play a little bit by having some nice things like the big engine opening. So you just see how everything works together. There's no separate piece. Everything works as one uh, concept. But now something very exciting. Uh, one very good decision that we did was we started immediately. As you saw this little model that I showed you as the concept of the car, we knew exactly what we want. So we started to develop the combustion engine immediately. We started with the battery. So we have the combustion engine running on dynos for already two years. Uh, so the powertrain is very mature. And what you will hear now is the actual sound of the engine accelerating from zero to over 400 kilometers per hour. You will hear how it actually sounds. The video is CGI, but the sound is real. So listen to this. So it's a very unique sound, right? It doesn't sound like a V8, doesn't sound like a V12. It's something on its own, and that's what we wanted to achieve, something unique. And it's actually a very interesting combination. Quite an old school combustion engine, because no turbos, but actually made possible by a high-tech electric powertrain. It's kind of like how the anecdote of how electric cars got killed by the electric motor, by the electric starter, so people didn't have to crank their engine anymore. And that made it easier to use combustion engines. And then this killed the electric car. So the electric motor kind of killed the electric car 100 years ago. Here we have the electric motor saving the naturally aspirated engine. <laughs> and another interesting thing we saw here was how the instrument cluster works. So you saw on the center part, you have the RPMs going all the way above 9,000. RPM, so you have this one meter long crankshaft with 16 uh, pistons on it, spinning over 9,000 RPM. Then you have the speedometer, and you see how far it goes, so there is potential in this car. And on the right, you have the power meter in horsepower. You have two needles, one for the combustion engine, one for the electric powertrain, and you basically add up the power of each. So you could see now with full acceleration, the electric, sorry, the combustion one goes to 1,000 horsepower. The electric one goes to up to 800. So we have 1,000 horsepower from the combustion engine, 800 horsepower from the electric for a total power of 1,800 horsepower. And all of these movements you see, all of these gears, they are actually moving the needles. So the needle is being moved by those mechanics behind it. Then you can also see on the lower side of the steering wheel the modes. On the left side are the chassis modes. So how you set up the suspension, steering, aerodynamics, and so on. On the right side is powertrain modes. We want to give power to the customers. We don't want to make decisions for you. If you want to drive combustion only, turn a button, you drive combustion only. There is no electric assistance. If you want to drive electric only, the combustion engine will never turn on unless you deplete the battery. If you want the car to make the decision for you, you go into hybrid mode and the car does everything itself. But one thing we'll for sure not do is that the engine turns on and off all the time annoying you. So, <laughs> And another cool thing on the left side, we are displaying the battery state of charge with an analog Swiss watchmaking um, instrument instead of a digital way. So we talked uh, also about, we, we, let's talk a little bit about the numbers. Bugatti is not really so much anymore about numbers. It's about the whole package, but we have to mention them. I will just mention one. The 0 to 400 kilometers per hour is seven seconds faster compared to the Chiron. So we have 
higher top speed. We have higher, uh, better acceleration, more power. But the magic trick really is that the car is lighter. By how much, I won't say, because we are still working on some details. It still could go a few kilos up and down. It won't be a lot, but it is lighter than the Chiron, which is, I think, a huge achievement, mostly thanks to Emilio and his relentless push for it, because he made sure that every kilo gets squeezed out. And how did we do that? Two things. One is architecture, so the overall concept, so big, big uh, decisions at the beginning. So going from the combustion engine, or sorry, from the turbo engine to a naturally aspirated one, you lose a lot of the peripherals that you need with the turbo engine. Uh, pumps, pipes, intercoolers. Then you have less torque going through the gearbox because a part of the torque is being taken care of from the electric powertrain, so the gearbox gets lighter. So the battery is 200 kilos. The front e-axle with two electric motors is 82. The rear electric motor is 23, the rear inverter is 11. So you have 300 kilos of electric powertrain, 300 kilos. That's, let's say, added on top. So if you take a Chevron, that would be two tons plus 300 kilos. We have removed this 300 kilos from the combustion engine, from the gearbox, but also other parts. 